Welcome to the Knife Junkie Podcast, the place for blade lovers to learn about knives and hear from the makers, manufacturers, and reviewers that make the knife world go round. I'm Bob DeMarco, and coming up, we're going to take a look at uh, the shark lock out in the wild. I get a new custom from Pinkerton, and we're going to take a look at some super cool clip point folders. Welcome to the Knife Junkie Podcast, your weekly dose of knife news and information about knives and knife collecting. Here's your host, Bob the Knife Junkie DeMarco. Welcome back to the show. My favorite comment from this past week was from Papik, 1965, on my Jack Wolf Knives Laidback Jack 2 uh, review. He says, Hey, thanks for your review, man. I've never owned a Jack Wolf knife before, but often see them on Knife Center reviews. It's absolutely beautiful. And if I may so, uh, great close-up camera work showing detail. I thank you, sir. Uh, It's an expensive buy for me, but looking at uh, quality, it's worth it. My next knife. And uh, the reason I chose this, uh, this is my favorite comment this week, because this is not something that I see the Knife Junkie channel as as necessarily um, a service that I don't necessarily see us performing. Here's a new knife. Check it out. Is it is it worth your money? Of course, like that's baked in a little bit. But um, there are other channels that I love that I follow religiously uh, who always have the new knives. And and that's kind of their deal. Like, check out the latest thing. Is this worth your money? And I'm I'm glad you got that out of my my close up of that knife. And also, thank you for your kind words over my camera work. I've always been insecure about it, so uh, it's great that the close ups of that knife uh, helped sell uh, sell it to you. Uh, and it is worth every penny of it, no doubt. And uh, I love supporting our our American uh, designers. So thank you very much, Papik 1965, and everyone else who watched commented, liked, and did all of that this past week. It's greatly appreciated. All right, those thanks out. Time for a pocket check. In my front right pocket today, I had the very luxurious Pical fighter here in my pocket. This is the inversion from Kaiser. I called it a fighter, but actually... Of all of the Pical style knives I have, Pical, uh, if if you haven't heard me drone on endlessly about it so far, Pical is this style of knife where the t- uh, the tip is down and the edge is in. It's primarily for self-defense and takes advantage of your adrenaline dump caveman motions. When all of your fine motor skills go out the door and you're not doing your fancy uh, Kali uh, stuff. So, but this one in particular makes an excellent EDC knife. It's, it is a Pical and it does look kind of odd. You expect the blade to be oriented in the opposite direction for that handle where that choil is. Uh, but once you get over that, you'll find out that it's not just a great self-defense knife. It is a great EDC knife. You have a uh, center line tip here. Uh, you have uh, a, a hawk bill, which is great for just all sorts of cutting. You're pulling on straps, you're pulling on rope or string. Uh, that sort of uh, li- uh, small recurve there in the hawk bill captures the material so you can slice right through it. Uh, it has a uh, setup so that you can use it with that, uh, um, what do you call it, utility pull cut kind of grip. So this, I, I, I say that this is probably the most EDC friendly Pical style folder out there. Now, as you may know from listening to my tier one gear reviews uh, interview, there are not too many folding Pical's out there, but of them, this one is uh, to me does the best job of flexing between just an awesome utility knife and an awesome um, self-defense knife. This one ships with two different uh, openers. This one, gives you sort of that, uh, the wave ability there. Uh, this is a discontinued knife, but Dirk Pinkerton is bringing out a new inversion under his own, uh, shingle. And I, I'm on the pre-order for it. It includes a ring that can come, uh, that can screw right in these two posts here and you can either have it or not have it. Uh, but it's perfectly positioned, uh, right there. It doesn't change your, your grip at all. So if you're, apprehensive about rings this one might uh might 
win your confidence. Okay, next up, the uh, the subject of that very nice comment, the laid back Jack V2. I'm not sure if he's actually calling it the V2, but this is the second run of the laid back Jack, which was the uh, second knife ever from Jack Wolf Knives, a sway back Jack pattern with the beautiful Warncliffe blade. On this model, they did a number of uh, changes here. First and uh, most recognizable is they extended the bolster. Uh, ben Belkin extended the bolster and made it a more of a barlow there, a bolster taking up a third of the handle. And then the covers, he did some really uh, unique things. Uh, he went more traditional with the wood and the curanite, uh, two materials that we see on uh, traditional slip joint folders that we haven't seen on Jack Wolf knives yet. That purple Kiranite is gorgeous. That also has a black anodized blade and titanium bolster. So that's a totally unique look for that model. This one for me, um, he knows me well. He knows my taste well. Uh, this was uh, sent to me by uh, Ben of Jack Wolf knives, and he said, "I think you and your audience will appreciate." the beautiful rosewood covers we're putting on. And for the first time ever in 13 models, I, I guess 14 models, uh, he's putting natural materials on in the form of this beautiful rosewood. Uh, rosewood is a robust wood. You see it on the fretboards of guitars. Uh, but the main concern is having something built overseas with different heat, humidity, and conditions uh, with those natural materials, and then having them shipped to the United States and uh, expand or um, change their characteristics due to the changes in the atmosphere and humidity and that kind of thing. So uh, I guess, you know, this this was something, uh, a kind of wood that is is pretty good for the purpose. Uh, they Like I said, they're on guitars and guitars are made all over the world and shipped to the United States. So uh, I guess it works. Uh, on this one, just a beautiful hand rub satin with the, those horizontal lines and uh, a a even larger and even larger uh, sharpening choil there. Beautiful. That is the way to do it. I love that. Uh, also very thin, very slicey. These are very impressive knives. And uh, I'm very grateful to have this one, especially in that rosewood. Okay, on my belt today, right up front, I'm going to try and get... Well, on my belt, right up front is uh, the... Combatant by T. Kell Knives. Just a very wearable and easily concealed uh, so that the, the sheeple around you don't get nervous, but a very, very easily concealed utility knife. To me, this is definitely a an EDC fixed blade knife that could definitely, of course, like all, flex into um, combatives. Uh, on this version of the Combatant, this is his second version. He added that swedge for improved uh, thrusting, he being Tim Kell. Uh, a lot about this knife I love. It is it is very small, It's but it's wide enough to get a good grip on it. It is just barely four fingers for me. I, who wear uh, medium uh, leather work gloves. Uh, and then it has these two deep choils here with high peaks that act almost as sub hilts. They really keep this small handle locked in hand. Uh, very, very sharp as all Kell knives are. And he's using these Burl G10s that I love so much. This was the first one I think he used. Uh, and it's supposed to look like a wood burl. It's like a swirly G10 with layers. Beautiful. And now he's using it. Uh, I have the gray man version of this. It's gray, obviously, on my MR1. I have the green version of that on my um, Night Stalker. And now I see he's got like purple burl and red burl. And all the beautiful colors uh, that you can get in a G10 handle from T. Kell is now in that the burl. Um, so go go check those out. Really, really awesome. Um, just utility knife. Like, like I said, it, it's innocent enough looking that you could have it on you um, really for work all day long and no one will bat an eye. Uh, but if you needed to, you could you could use that in the Tim Kell way. You know, he's always talking about how to use his knives defensively. And with the really slim line sheath that they do with the discrete carry concepts horizontal clip here, uh, it's a perfect carry. All right, last up, Omni for emotional support, kind of an old favorite, the Troodon, the Microtech Troodon. 
I felt uh, I felt like I needed two edges on me today. Uh, I didn't, <laughs> but I felt like I did. So uh, I got the old Troa down out. I love the uh, the serrations on the top. I recently discussed those on uh, the show on serrations. I like having that option. Actually, I've always thought that the Troodon and the Ultratech are really great upside down. Uh, this is the way you're, you're kind of the prescribed manner of holding it, at least in um, saber grip. But if you flip it, the actuation tab is a little bit further back than the thumb ramp, which, uh, you know, the finger ramp now becomes the thumb ramp. And this is a more proper setup, I think with the thumb a little bit forward. And uh, so either way you hold this knife, it's a, a great user and uh, fun to play with, no doubt. And this one has always rung here. Listen, oh, hang on. I, got, I had a misfire there. This never happens. Hang on, hear that ring? I swear, baby, this never happens. All right, so this is uh, the Microtech Troodon. That was my emotional support knife today. My ESK, still trying to make fetch happen. And uh, and and that really uh, actually does when you're sitting there editing in the dark and you're like, hmm, should it be a, uh, you know, should it be a dissolve or a wipe or whatever? Hing, hing, hing. By the way, it should, it should hardly ever, never, ever be a wipe. Hardly ever. Okay, uh, so that's what I had in my pockets today. What did you have in yours? I had the Kaiser Inversion, the Jack Wolf Knives, Laidback Jack V2, the TKL Knives Combatant, and the Microtech Troodon. Uh, to me, a great quadrangle of edginess uh, on me today. Uh, let me know what you had on you. I love it. I love hearing it. It gives me ideas, and uh, I need more of those. All right, coming up on the Knife Junkie podcast, we're going to take a look at some new drops from CRKT, and then we'll get to the state of the collection where I have a new Pinkerton custom right here on the Knife Junkie podcast. If you're a knife junkie, you're always in the market for a new knife, and we've got you covered. For the latest weekly knife deals, be sure to visit the knifejunkie.com slash knives. Through our special affiliate relationships, we bring you weekly knife specials on your favorite knives. Help support the show and save money on a new knife. Shop at thenifejunkie.com slash knives. That's thenifejunkie.com slash knives. You're listening to the Knife Junkie podcast. And now here's the Knife Junkie with the Knife Life News. Well, just in time for National Knife Day last week. Oof, which, excuse me, which... um. All the purveyors turn into National Knife Week, which I, I very much respect because that's what I do with my birthday. Um, they had uh, uh, CRKT, uh, as well as a number of other companies, and we'll we'll see another one in a minute here. Uh, dropped some pretty cool new models. Uh, I'm not a huge CRKT fan, but I love. Uh, where else are you going to get a Flavio Icoma that you can afford? Uh, so this is the new one called the Bot. It's in um, Aus 10. It's a fully flat ground, beautiful drop point. I love that. It's kind of, um, well, it's definitely all Icoma all day long, this entire knife. But it also has a sort of Ken Onion vibe. I like uh, these two designers a lot for their sort of uh, use of organic line. And this, of course, has that deadbolt lock. Uh, the deadbolt, uh, much like the new warning lock from... Um, beyond EDC is, is, uh, mounted on the pivot. Now, I'm not sure how the new, um, beyond EDC lock works yet, but I know that this one has two pins. This was also a lock, uh, developed by Flavio Icoma, who was uh, big in the IKBS. He's the I in IKBS, uh, the first people to use bearings, uh, in pivots, or at least to turn it into a, a formalized thing. Uh, so that pivot, uh, you press it in, it's a spring-loaded pivot, and it puts two dead bolts or two um, two bolts through the uh, two holes in the tang of the blade. Uh, so pretty strong. Uh, I feel like they introduced that with, well, they introduced that lock with a $700 Flavio Icoma CRKT, like out of the blue. Like people are used to paying like 30 bucks for a CRKT. This was a couple of years back now. And then, boom, they came out with that that knife. I can't remember what it was called, but they were like sending it to people, getting it in people's hands. And it was a $700 CRKT proof of concept knife. Uh, but 
uh, and it had that deadlock. And then, and then after that, they came out with a number of affordable knives with that. But um, interesting, it's supposed to be a very strong lock. Um, but you know, at, at a certain point. Yeah, it's a strong lock. I'm sure they're all strong locks. They all fail around the handle material or around the blade. We we know locks are strong. Okay, so, uh, but that one to me seems nice and fidgety. So that's the bot. Uh, and also that's a 2.21 inch blade. So a, a, a little one, a little one. And then um, next from uh, them, we have Jim Hammond, who did the Hammond Cruiser, which was a huge tactical folder for CRKT in the late 90s, early 2000s. I remember getting one for an editor buddy of mine for a project he helped me on. And this is sort of a truncated version uh, of that knife and another one. This is the PSD. Uh, he is, uh, Jim Hammond is big into the acronyms. The PSD is the particle separation device, uh, which is a <laughs> A nice way of saying knife. Uh, you got your uh, three-inch blade. It's a it's a downgrade or a downsize from the th original three point six inch. You got Aus ten, and uh, the original was forty one sixteen Kruppstahl. So this is definitely a uh, an upgrade. And then lastly, uh, a a a very sehr sehr hässlich messer. This knife is ugly as sin, if you ask me. Also from Jim uh, Jim Hammond. Uh, it's called the ABC, another acronym, um, and it's all bases covered. It's a drop tip Tonto. The blade is pretty nice with VEF serrations. It really loses me with the handle and where the handle connects, the, the overall. It's it's just not a very good looking knife, uh, but I'm sure it's very effective and that's what it's for. This one is 12C28N and is spring assisted. If it wasn't, if it wasn't enough, it is spring assisted. I don't like this knife. I'll just come right out and say it. But I do like uh, the original Jim Hammond Cruiser, and I definitely like that Flavio Icoma. So CRKT coming out with more stuff. <clears throat> I would like to be the uh, the CEO of that company for two years. No, I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. You can't pretend to know what goes on behind the, the the door of a boardroom, but I would love them to take their resources and just, they're, 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 they're groping, they're groping for something better. I just wish they would capture it because CRKT has so many great designers at their behest and uh, a lot of resources. So they, they, will, they will hit greatness again. All right, next up, uh, it's a Gerber. Um, this one is a fixed blade, uh, kind of like the Gerber Rock, uh, something that is appealing to me. But unlike the Gerber Rock, this one is not designed by Bill Harsey Jr., though it looks like it is. Uh, it's a sl very slim, um, compact outdoors uh, uh, fixed blade knife for backpacking and, uh, you know, light camping outdoor activities. But if you look at it, especially uh, the blade and where the blade meets the uh, forward grip, it looks a lot. It's very Harzian, uh, especially the, the sharpening choil into the finger guard and the thumb ramp. Um, overall shape of the blade looks very Harzy. And then the handle is not too far off either, especially when you look at the pommel, those three angles at the pommel. So I'm not sure if they're going back to the well uh, of designs they've gotten from him in the past and kind of are riffing off that or or what. But it's obviously a good looking knife if it looks like a Harzy, uh, but this one they, they chose 440 a for, so it's kind of like they're saying, <laughs> I don't know. What are they saying by putting this in 440 a, um, you know, they, there are other cheap steels they could use that uh, at least would gain more confidence from the market. Cause I know a lot of people just, you know, they're like, well, if it's 440 a and it's a buck and it's got the boss heat treat, well, fine. But if it's coming from Gerber, most people are likely to 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 look down their nose at it. But, you know, that's that's neither here nor there. It's got a very slim uh, frame. It's uh, or not frame uh, in profile, but uh, in cross section. And it's four point oh six ounces. <sighs> Close, but no cigar, Gerber. I, that, I, I feel like that's their that's the mantra over there. OK, next up. Uh, the August buck of the month. This is a nice one. It, it, it's a a reissue of a of a now uh, 
what do you call it? Discontinued fixed blade. It's the 101 and it's the fixed blade version of the 110. But in this case, it's a drop point. And I got to say, it's pretty, pretty cool looking. It's not normally my, uh, uh, you know, I'm, I'm always going for a clip point. That's the whole subject of of the show today. But uh, this, I got to say, as a drop point is pretty compelling. You got that beautiful uh, nickel bolster, uh, nickel silver bolster, and you have a, a, a very interesting sort of micarta there. Um, it's a called a dark, smoky, gray, black, gray's harbor, rich light. I, I guess the the rich light is called gray's harbor, but the descriptors are dark, smoky, gray, black. Ooh, it's a quiet storm in here. So it's a uh, it's a 154 cm with Paul Boss heat treat, which is awesome because I love 154 cm. And uh, you know, I can't say I have. I, I just hear that the Paul Boss heat treat is awesome. So Paul, keep doing what you do. Weighs 5.1 ounces. You get a nice leather uh, drop sheath. Uh, beautiful buck of the month for August 2023. Last up, I want to talk about the uh new knife coming out from flytanium now flytanium started life as makers of bally songs and scales uh titanium scales aftermarket scales for popular models this is their first uh completely original folder and they're using the demco shark lock which just warms the cockles of my heart um not too much fanfare i have to say uh, I was just kind of looking at this knife because it was uh, in the new arrivals or what's what's to come um, or, or, you know, knives to come on Blade HQ. And this was there and I saw the the shark lock tab and I was wondering, that looks like a shark lock. Is that the shark lock or is that just a um, thumb ramp further back on an extended tang of like a front flipper? And lo and behold, it is indeed the shark lock so this is really really cool to see because a lot of companies like benchmade like spiderco they wait for that patent to um to expire and then others can just you know rush in and start using it as we saw with the axis lock as we're starting to see with the compression lock but here you know in the i don't want to say infancy in the adolescence of the shark lock we can see it being licensed out and i love that um, I think that's cool on on the Demco side. It's business savvy, A and B. It's it's cool to release that locking technology out there. If you really believe in it and love it, why not? Uh, and it's cool to see on a different knife other than a Demco design. And I find this design to be beautiful. Thank God it's not in my, um, or I should say, thank Flytanium that it's not in my size wheelhouse. So I can easily dismiss it from my very long list or from my short list. It can go on the bottom of my long list of upcoming purchases i've really slowed down on the purchases i've been very disciplined uh because uh, there's a custom knife i've been angling for and it's uh, honestly it's not uh, so much more than you know it's it's less than a hinderer but I'm, I'm becoming a little more um well maybe disciplined or something i'm trying to save my shekels a little more uh it's so i can get some special things rather than uh, try and get everything in here because they look good. And I, I swear, I watch a, a Stasa video or a Neves video, and and they they really whet my appetite for every knife they show, even knives that are too small or have weird blades or things that I don't even like. Uh, they could sell ice to Eskimo. So I need to stop being that Eskimo and kind of save my money and get the things that I really, really want so I can refine and reduce, you know. Okay, <laughs> coming up, we're going to take a look at the state of the collection. That I got four new knives, so I guess that was a pretty bad preamble uh, this week. But uh, this is a this has been a banner week, and then after that, we'll take a look at some super cool a dozen of them, super cool clip point folders. Don't take dull for an answer. It's the Knife Junkie's favorite sign-off phrase, and now you can get that tagline on a variety of merchandise, like a t-shirt, sweatshirt, hoodie, long-sleeve tee, and more, even on coasters, tote bags, a coffee mug, water bottle, and stickers. Let everyone know that you're a Knife Junkie and that you don't take dull for an answer. Get yours at thenifejunkie.com slash dull and shop for all of your Knife Junkie's merchandise at thenifejunkie.com slash shop. 
And now that we're caught up with Knife Life news, let's hear more of the Knife Junkie podcast. I received this beauty from Dirk Pinkerton this past week, and um, it was just sent to me as a gift. And I am so grateful. I, I, I recently highlighted his knives on uh, this show, and um, I realized at, so, at a certain point, I'm like, wow, I have a, a lot of his knives. And what is it about Dirk Pinkerton uh, that th that his designs just really, you know, activate my <laughs> the collector in me? And uh, it's this seamless. Um, it's this ability to go from EDC to tactical without uh, kind of at the same time without any. Uh, Hard to explain, but every one of his knives could be used and owned by someone who just wants a tool to open things and cut things. And But they could also all be owned by people like me who like every knife to be a weapon. This is his broadhead. It's a model that's uh, a sort of a standby or, or a stable it, staple in his custom uh, cat catalog. So if you don't know, Dirk Pinkerton... Um, designs a whole bunch of knives, beautiful folders uh, and fixed blades for uh, the likes of Kaiser, uh, Concept, Beyond EDC, uh, and and many others actually. And uh, but he also is amazing behind the grinder and is well respected by his peers for his grinding ability. And that is so evident here when you take a look at this broadhead here. There we go and focus. Look at that tip. It's just unbelievable. I like that human hands. <laughs> okay, I'm getting dramatic, but to me, uh, that is very impressive. Uh, freehand grinding uh, something to a point like that is that's pretty damn awesome. Even if it wasn't freehand ground, even if you're using uh, specialized jigs all day long to make that, uh, which is not the case in this case, still that would be impressive. Um, that tip is just. Unreal. So this is uh, the broadhead. This one, by the way, is in Magna Cut. Let me show that off here. You can see the little Magna Cut right there. And that beautiful GL Hansen and Son uh, G Carta there. This one, as you can see, is double-edged. Looks very much like a broadhead arrowhead. Um, but some other models come in a Hawkbill Tonto, like a Hawkbill Tonto style. You can... Uh, he does a number of different blades uh, for this, but that ring there, I mean, he he sent this to me to uh, help uh, assuage my doubts about ringed things because this, this ringed knife is so incredibly versatile. I mean, you can hold this in so many different ways. Uh, say you have it in this awesome sheath hanging uh, from around your neck. Grabbing it like this is so easy, and then you have all these different grips just uh, all these different angles of attack just from the forefinger. You can, of course, put it in a more traditional push dagger on your on your middle finger. Dirk was telling me he loves it in this reverse grip, uh, which feels like it's just kind of a part of your hand. Um, yeah, so an amazing, amazing knife, beautifully made. This is one of his um, customs. You guys, if you're interested in getting... Uh, starting to amass uh, some customs in your in your collection, handmade things, especially things as useful and beautiful as this. Check out some makers, and and you might be surprised. Uh, you might you might be surprised by what Dirk charges for something like this. Uh, I I can't quote you a, a price right here, uh, but I know that um, that I've been able to afford them. So maybe you can too. Uh, maybe a custom knife is not so far out of your reach and a name like Pinkerton and designs like his um, are well worth it. So uh, very, very grateful to him for sending this to me. It it, it expands my uh, Pinkerton collection and I'm very grateful. Uh, there's a whole bunch of other ones uh, that are in the offing for me from him. So <laughs> what can I say? Uh, okay, next up, uh, the Cold Steel SR Lite. Now, now I'm late to the party on this, as I frequently am. Uh, but this one was always on my radar. We gave this away. This was one of the first, if not the first, Gentleman Junkie knife giveaway 
models right here. So I've had this uh, come through my hands and I've really, really loved it. Uh, and so I was excited to see when it was on Amazon for 36 bucks uh, that I should just get it. And I did. And um, it, it is really, really awesome. It's it's uh, not the OS 10. The reason it's 36 bucks is because this is an 8CR13 MOV. And uh, ordinarily, I'd I'd uh, I'd walk away. I'd shut it down and walk away like Robert De Niro would say. Uh, but but in this case, uh, I, I know I'm so confident in Cold Steel and their ability to wring every last bit of utility and edge retention and stain resistance and all that from from the most pedestrian of steels. I mean, the the OS eight they used for years was great. Uh, so I have no doubt that they did an awesome job with this 8CR13 MOV. Now, I've only used this to cut things that wouldn't stress the edge. It is incredibly sharp, especially for such a stout blade. It's a pretty stout blade, but man, uh, glides through the material I've cut so far. Now, I have not done anything like... Um, mm, well, I haven't done cardboard yet. I've done paper, I've done rope and string with this, but I haven't done any boxes. I'm curious to see whether the geometry will wedge out and be uh, make it more difficult for that kind of cutting. But something tells me this kind of is just striking all the magic means here. Uh, very comfortable. I wouldn't mind having the G10 version, uh, but not necessary for my uh, personal uh, need from the SR1. So this $36 8CR13 MOV version will most definitely do. Not a huge fan of the design of the clip point of this one, uh, but but the Tonto is a knockout. Uh, speaking of knockout, the CJRB Pyrite. Uh, loved that knife. I gave my Pyrite that they sent me to a friend, a friend in need, and uh, she carries it in her purse now. Uh, this is the XL. This is the one I was holding out for, or the large, actually. Uh, this is the large pyrite that's a nearly four inch blade, 14C 28N, nice and broad, super thin. Well, you got thin blade stock, super thin behind the edge, very, very slicey knife. Uh, I love this gorgeous um, micarta, green micarta, a little more blue in there than you would see on, say, an OD green micarta. It's got, it's more of a forest green, you know, the color of your Jaguar XKE. Uh, I love the flipping act, the um, the fidget action on the pyrite. I as soon as I got the first one, the little three and a quarter inch pyrite, I immediately immediately recognized it's how good the button lock is. To me, it it was the best button lock of my collection, and uh, now I'm thinking this might uh, this might be beating the Mad Tonto from Kaiser as well now that this one is broken in there was a little bit of lock stick on this maybe the first day uh but uh flip it seven trillion times and that goes away <laughs> and that's what this knife uh this has been a great end of summer knife nice and thin and light but big and uh great in the shorts carry uh so much weight relief happening in there that you can do this though you can squeeze it even with my left hand i can i can squeeze it but not a deal breaker. It's springy steel. It's not like you're going to crush it and, uh, and you know, interrupt the path of the blade. It's just kind of, I don't know. I, I don't, I'm, I'm not crazy about the flex, I'll say. But I, I am crazy about this knife overall. And actually, looking at it uh, in this view, sitting there on that piece of uh, suede, I love that you can see the frame or the um, the liner. I like how they sit proud like that in a letterbox fashion. I think it's very handsome in it. It defines the shape of it really nicely. All right, so that's the CJRB Large Pyrite now in the collection. And then lastly, this is a very special one. This was a birthday gift from my good friend, Dave, this old sword blade reviews. He sent me this, and then this will be the first knife of our super cool clip point category. So this is sort of a, a bridge knife from State of the Collection. Uh, but this is brand new uh, to me, and it is beautiful. And the funny thing is, is Dave sent this to me because he said, um, I know you love the Jack Wolf knives, and somehow this has that feel to me. And 
I agree. And I think I've come to the conclusion it's the shape of that clip point blade. It really looks like a um, slip joint clip point. <laughs> I like saying that. It really does look like a clip point that you would find on a slip joint knife. Uh, this, this morning, I showed my wife this knife. She loved it. She said, it's a knife knife. And I'm like, oh, okay. Uh, and she was trying to figure out what it was. She's like, it's, it, it looks like the knife a cowboy might carry, uh, despite the modern, you know, uh, but, and I was like, yes, yes, right. It, it has that old school vibe. And I think it's that clip point. Anyway, a beautiful four inch uh, S35 VN clip point blade on this artisan cutlery bolster lock frame, just a beautiful, beautiful knife to hold to use, to cut with. It is so incredibly sharp. And then just to behold, I love looking at it. Um, you got that nice fuller there. And then you'll notice that logo. This is a, a D-Rocket design. Dariel Castillon uh, designed this one. Very unique and cool uh, work coming out, from, coming out of D-Rocket design. I love that clip. It works very, very well. A weird sort of dog leg shape, but nice, good in khakis, and good in jeans. You know how jeans have the, the flat pocket going straight across and khakis have the tilted. Uh, you know, some clips work better in, in others. This works great in both. A very broad handle down here by the um, uh, by the pommel area. It just widens out, widens out. A nice grip. It's nice and thin, so having a broad handle is welcome. And you just have stellar, stellar action. And then, of course, you can flick it with the fuller. So I'm going to use this as uh, as the first of the super cool clip point folders because that's exactly what this is. Uh, by the way, on this knife uh, and on other artisan cutleries, you have really, really nice machine satin there. So you get the nice lines and the nice shine and then a beautiful swedge. Okay, but none of these knives that I'm about to discuss it, or that Hyperion there uh, would exist without this. So I, I need to tip my hat to the Buck 110, uh, the classic uh, clip point locking folder. And that's what we're talking about today. Uh, this knife, though, by today's standards is a little bulky and heavy. Uh, that handle is made of, you know, solid brass liners and wood. And then a steel spring on the back. It's it's not a light knife, but it's been compelling for ever since it was created. And uh, this is, I remember Rob Bixby saying, this is like uh, redneck tactical. He's like, how many times has this knife over the years been used as a quote unquote tactical knife? Well, probably more than any other quote unquote tactical folder out there because it's been around a long time and it's been on the hip of of countless countless men uh over the years so uh this this is only um in my opinion carryable on the hip in that in that cool leather pouch uh, you you can make a leather slip for your pocket i did uh, but it was still just heavy in the pocket um i should have uh, weighed it beforehand but here uh, you have a super thin hollow grind very very sharp knife man i love this buck 110 uh 440a uh, steel uh, this one i do not think has the uh, paul boss heat treat now this i got at walmart for 40 bucks i'm i don't see the boss logo on this so i'm not sure it has it but it's been a great knife um and it is th the progenitor i think that's a, a the right word of everything else you're about to see the great granddaddy we'll say Okay, so going from classic American to super modern Chinese, let's take a look at Petrified Fish, uh, the company with the weirdest name out there. Um, but they are making some really, really um, beautiful knives and super high quality. This was a $40 knife, um, kind of buggers the mind uh, when you think of how it was made and uh, possibly the... <laughs> The human suffering that maybe went into making this possible at forty dollars, maybe, maybe not uh, this day and age. I'm not sure. I'm not sure, uh, but it's just a a gorgeous clip point. It's it's a um, 
a swooping curving clip point. And, and to me, that's a swashbuckler. To me, that's a classic Bowie shaped uh, clip point blade. And I think that's what drew me to this initially. It reminds me of the, of, of the cold steels and, uh, and of the Western buoy and of the different classic uh, swoop swedged bowies. I'm going to call it this one and only time. Uh, and then you see that is a little opening hole on the back exclusively for us knife nerds who like to open knives like that and know that that's an option. That's Spidey Flick. Uh, they use really nice materials. The, the um, micarta on this knife is beautiful. I love the color and I love how it has uh, taken a patina here. K110 steel, which is analogous to D2. Uh, very sharp. And the action is just sickeningly nice. All right, next up, this is a very, very unique clip point blade shape. Uh, we saw it with the EDC version of it uh, that is uh, initially, and then he came out with the XL, and now there's going to be a fixed blade version, which just has me very excited. Uh, this is the Cayman XL from Off Grid Knives. First, let's talk about that blade. Oh. Uh, that blade is uh, a very dramatic tip, down tip, low tip, clip point blade. So, I mean, this is a great utility clip point blade shape. If you're doing a lot of uh, pull cuts and drag cuts, this kind of thing where you're using the tip a lot, this is an excellent uh, clip point blade shape because that's not an upswept tip like you see, say, for instance, on this knife. Uh, it is a down, <laughs> down, not downswept, but it is a low slung tip. So you can bring it to bear easily on those kind of pull cuts. And then you see that dramatic long swedge coming on that broad blade. <clears throat> it is a very uh, efficient thruster, let's say. Right up there at the tip, you're going to have a diamond. It's gonna, it's, it basically has the profile of a dagger right up at the tip, but it widens out dramatically, which makes whatever stab you're going to be doing with this, if you're going to stab it into something uh, way more big and dramatic. And uh, so... For that reason, to me, I, I view this as a, it's a great utility tactical knife. I mean, if you had to use this in a fight, you could do some um, very grievous stuff with very little effort uh, with the shape of that blade. Um, but that's not what we're going to use this for. We're all going to carry this and enjoy the awesome best tech made action. We're going to enjoy the beautiful shape and the ergonomics and the utility and the 154C, I'm sorry, the Sandvik uh, 14C. 28 and blade steel. We're also going to enjoy how nicely uh, broad that handle is. Uh, it just is so comfortable in hand and makes you very confident in the wielding of that big dangerous blade, which is four inches, by the way, and on absolute buttered glass right here uh, in terms of action. So that is the off grid Cayman XL. If that one's too big for you, check out the Cayman EDC. It is awesome it is one of my uh few little big knives like the yojimbo which is below my preferred blade size at three and a quarter inches but uh, cuts and carries so much like a bigger knife uh that well i shouldn't say carries like a bigger knife but uh, uh in in hand and in cutting uh, seems bigger so uh check out the cayman edc if the xl here at four inches is too much for you Speaking of too much for you, this one might be, but it ain't for me. Uh, this is actually um, a very manageable large knife. This is the Beyond EDC asymmetrical line, but you can also get this in the inexpensive Beyond EDC line. Night Horse, designed by Dirk Pinkerton, and it is a modern Navaja. The folding knife uh, created in Spain, um, when they were disarmed, when the average citizenry could no longer carry swords to, uh, uh, to the marketplace and, you know, to, to settle their differences, they started making these, uh, large folding locking clip point knives that had, uh, uh, ratchet locks on the back. So it had a sort of, um, wheel on the back, uh, of the blade with ratchets cut into it or little notches. And it fit into a ring pull um, 
device on the back that allowed it to lock open. And it also made a menacing click, 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 click noise when you opened it. If you if you've ever experienced the Spyderco Navaja, uh, they they uh, they sort of emulated that with the lock. Uh, another missed opportunity uh, using Ed Shemp as the designer. I, I don't mean to diss Ed Shemp, but he does some very awkward things, I think, with some very beautiful, graceful designs. But anyway, this is about this Pinkerton design. Now, this uh, you're, you're saying that's a clip point, and I'm saying, yes, it is. It's a Spanish-style clip point. Uh, you can see that in the Mel Miguel Barbudo. If you don't know who he is, look him up on Instagram. Uh, he is a master... Uh, Spanish knife maker, a master at making these incredible long, flat Spanish clips. And uh, I love them. I think they're great looking, but I also think they're great utility and great for fighting. Great for fighting because you have that long point and that belly for slashing and a downward rake to the um, edge. So you get maximized uh, cutting or damage in your, in your swipes. Uh, but also... You have this nice long portion in the front that you can use against flat surfaces that has a rounded uh, termination there. So uh, very good on flat surfaces for utility cutting. Uh, so though it is very weapony in its origin and frankly in its looks, uh, this does make a great EDC knife. I carry the... Um, so this is an exclusive from Smoky Mountain Knife Works. You can get it in this uh, titanium dress with the S30... Uh, with the uh, yeah, S35VN for 170 or something like that. Or you can get the G10 liner lock version with 14C28 and for 30 bucks. It's mind blowing. I don't, uh, but anyway, I carry that one quite a bit and uh, that ends up at the office a lot. And oddly enough, uh, this four, four and a quarter inch blade is an excellent food prep knife. Uh, only in a pinch have I have I used it that way, but it's awesome. Uh, and I think it has to do with that uh, kind of long portion up front, that first third of the blade, uh, which meets up with the cutting board just kind of at the right angle. Okay, so we're, we were just looking at long, somewhat sinuous, traditional fighting knife. Well, here's one that is small, not so sinuous, and modern. And this is from uh, Michael Cam, uh, David Cam, I'm sorry, David Cam of Orion Knives or Blade Banter. You might know him as Blade Banter. He's got an awesome channel on YouTube. Uh, but he started Orion Knives from his love of knives. And Orion, because his, his uh, son's favorite um, constellation is Orion. And in that household, they're very into... Um, Astronomy, and I think that's really cool, uh, especially if you're going to start a company and kind of involve your kids in it uh, eventually, you know, rope them into the whatever the family passions are and make make the knife about that, too. Uh, this is a really cool clip point blade for a number of reasons, one of which it's another little big knife. Uh, this is not ever a front pocket knife for me, but this is one that uh, ends up in my pocket a lot for emotional support because you have that awesome flipper button lock action. And by the way, David Cam with his uh, Solaris was ahead of the game with the flip uh, with the flippers flipper button locks. Uh, ahead of the game, meaning um, the Malibu had already been out, and uh, there had been a little bit of action on that front um, in terms of flipper button locks. Uh, but he really. I can't say he's responsible for blowing it up, but he, he was doing this and doing it well. And then Civivi and then all the other companies kind of did it. And I'm not saying that they were jumping on his bandwagon. What I'm saying is, is he was out ahead of the pack uh, doing this uh, long before a lot of the bigger companies were, and he did it great. So there you go. Uh, beautiful micarta handle, very warm in the hand. And uh, this is definitely meant for, choil use. I mean, I guess if you were um, never used a knife before and didn't realize that that choil was there, you could hold it like this. You could hold it like this for doing extended cuts, I'm trying to just cut that rosebud that I just can barely. Yeah, you could use it like that. But really, it's made kind of like the sage and a lot of spider, smaller spider coes to, to take advantage of that choil. Uh, this is 14C28 and a beautiful blade shape. This clip point, I love that it's got jimping on the, on the clip point. 
So that jimping is, uh, as David described it to me, um, for me, I thought it just looked cool, but then, yeah, you put your finger on there. Um, I'm not sure if you would use this for skinning an animal, but that might be handy in that case. Uh, but he was talking about you're cutting into things. Say you're cutting into a box, uh, a box full of down pillows, and you don't want to cut too deeply. You know, you're going to use that jimping to lock your finger in at a certain cut depth. Uh, maybe you have to go that deep. Maybe you have to go that deep. Maybe you have to go that deep. Well, that jimping is there to really hold your finger. And I think that's such a cool uh, value added tidbit there. I mean, to me, uh, when I first saw it, I was like, oh, that's cool. It looks cool, you know, uh, in my superficial way. But uh, then when the usage was apparent and described, um, it, it, it became even cooler, of course, because it has a purpose. Anodized aluminum backspacer and um, uh, uh, pivot collar. Uh, this, uh, I'm not sure if they're available yet, but more and more, um, you know, for the Solaris, he has a, which is a larger model than this, but utilizes this same setup around the pivot. Um, he has a lot of aftermarket, uh, fixtures for that. And I think that's coming for this too, if not already there, I haven't checked the website in a little while. All right. Next up, another brutally beautiful, um, clip point. That's no, not brutally. This is classy. This is classy and traditional and modern. Uh, this is the gunslinger Jack from Jack Wolf knives. His first locking, uh, the first locking knife in the Jack Wolf lineup has that beautiful clip point blade. So thin, uh, how full height, hollow grind, wicked, wicked, wickedly thin behind edge, uh, with this one, not as upswept say as the Benny's clip. Uh, so you have the tip just slightly below center line, just below that pivot, or maybe maybe exactly in line with that pivot. So it's a nice, useful tip, but you have an awesome little belly there. And then all of that straight. This is a very useful and uh, versatile um, clip point. Sometimes clip points are, are more specialized. They seem more specialized towards a tactical use or more specialized towards a utility. Uh, this is definitely flexing, though I, I wouldn't say that this is well, yeah, like anything else, you could use this uh, as a fighting knife, but it's obviously not designed as such. This is a gentleman's locking folder. This is a gentleman's EDC. And no, you don't have to be a gentleman to carry it, uh, but you should be a gentleman anyway, unless you're a gentle woman. Uh, you've got the triple fluted blasted titanium bolsters, which are so beautiful. And in my case, the Arctic Storm carbon fiber, absolutely beautiful. Of all of these, Carbon fibers. I like the cool colors uh, better. I like the purples and the the um, and the blues. Uh, though I have not had one of the warm color ones, uh, my eye is just drawn to this. I love the contrast, or not the contrast, but the way the blue looks next to the gray. It's kind of all cool. And then on this one, of course, you have the clip and the bolster lock. Such a great knife. Clip point all day long, and and uh, a number of different deployment methods to to the Jack Wolf Knives Gunslinger Jack. All right, the one slip joint on this list, and I could have put a lot because I have a lot of slip joints with very beautiful clip point blades, but this one takes the cake. Uh, we were talking about the Navaja before. Well, this is a little uh, non-locking slip joint folding Navaja designed by Goody Von Poppels. First name, Goody, G-U-D-Y. Last name, Von Poppels. V-O-N-P-O-P-P-E-L-S. He's Dutch, obviously. Go check him out on Instagram. His stuff is so beautiful. This, uh, by comparison to his custom work, uh, this is the Gitano, and, and that means gypsy, uh, I guess. And I'm, I'm, I'm told that's how it's pronounced, uh, the Gitano. And he does larger uh, uh, locking versions of this knife in, in titanium with all sorts of kind of decorative flourishes that are just beautiful. They are astounding. So please check that out. But this uh, entry-level Goody Von Poffel's uh, Lion Steel Gitano is, uh, has all of those sort of profile lines uh, without you know having to spend thousands of dollars. And this one has that uh, olive wood handle and um, came in green micarta and carbon fiber. But I was drawn to this 
warm, beautiful wood. It seemed most apropos for the design. Uh, I love micarta. I'm even starting to like uh, carbon fiber more, especially with the types I was just showing off. Uh, but for this knife, it, it needs natural material. Um, I feel like wood, yes, definitely, or horn would be nice. Uh, some sort of uh, buffalo horn or or even cow bone, you know, jigged cow bone would be cool. Uh, that is a titanium bolster. It's got really nice action, and um, it slaps home with such authority that for a long time I thought I might be experiencing blade wrap, but it's not. It's just it's just the, uh, sorry about that, the tang hitting hitting home on that stop pin. Uh, very nice ergonomics, and again, a clip. Uh, this one, when I first got it, I carried it all the time in my back left pocket. I haven't carried this one in a while, um, or I've been sort of bringing it out recently. Um, but that clip makes it very handy, and that, that incredibly stout spring uh, makes it very uh, confidence-inspiring. Uh, Blade steel, uh, uh, nylocks. Not sure what the hell, what that is, but nylocks. All right, next up. Now this guy, uh, he's French, <laughs> and designs uh, his all of his designs seem to have that double peaked spine, and I love that. It's K Max Rum, and uh, uh, his name is Jonathan Jonathan Renaudin. He's been on the show before. Very nice guy. Very interesting designs coming from this guy. Uh, he started off like most as a custom knife maker. I was following him, been following him for years on Instagram. Uh, I know the day I discovered him, it was the day my second daughter was born. And because uh, I was sitting in the hospital, doom scrolling knives. And uh, the it's the double peak on all of his designs that really got me. And he calls them pelicans mostly. Uh, but this one is the pret -a -tou. Um pret -a -tou is French for ready for anything prep ready and the rest means for anything i guess of uh, the pret -a uh came out originally in uh this blade shape and a very chris reeve taunt uh, esque tanto shape in titanium frame lock handles super smooth super awesome uh but then i got the micarta liner lock and i i fell in love with this so much carried this so much more than the titanium that I wanted it to go to a good home. It did indeed. It went to my friend, Will B. Uh, he is a uh, gentleman junkie and loves that knife. I think he carries it quite a bit, at least on Thursdays, he seems to. Um, fits in the hand so nicely. I love the, the ergonomics here. Uh, just a simple curve and a simple finger choil, but it melts, melts in the hand. Um, in reverse grip, it's also pretty pretty dang nice but the thing that really gets me is the 154 cm blade um clip point with the fuller which yes you can flick it open using the fuller uh, but it's just a beautiful beautiful clip point um reminds me a little bit of a mac v sog with those dual peaks there uh, that's something that is very very appealing to me thumb fits right up there in that notch okay next up is from uh, microtech here is another cool and unique clip point blade shape. This is the Bravo, uh, the SOCOM Bravo. Uh, this one made by Reich Knives, their first, uh, their first uh, Chinese OEM'd knife. Uh, Reich Knives is, seems like the perfect company to make something like this, especially with uh, the kind of sculptural work they do. I think this is a very sculptural knife uh, with the with all of the text, not textures, but all the different surfaces and with the sculpting in the blade. Uh, no doubt Riot could do an awesome job, but Reich just seemed like the right fit. Uh, I like this clip point because it is very subtle. It's a clip point that reminds me of, say, a Chris Reeve Knives Sabenza. You know, uh, if you squint your eyes, it might just look like a drop point, but then you look at where it takes a very definite turn down. And, uh, I've always liked the Microtech SOCOM clip points, but I've only ever had the Tonto. So I was very excited when the Bravo finally came out uh, in its second run and I was able to get my hands on it uh, and uh, and get this M390 blade steel. I have number 970. What do you think of that? Uh, nice carbon fiber, a beautiful knife to carry and to use, except that clip, actually, that clip, a uh, little tight. 
So be careful what you carry it with or just expand out the clip ever so slightly. All right, three more left. Let's get to this one, which is an absolute classic. This is the Emerson CQC-13. Of all the many, many clip point blades that Ernest Emerson has uh, designed and put into production, whether with Emerson, Kershaw, or ZT, or anyone else, this is the most beautiful of them all. Uh, you've got that dramatic swooped swedge uh, with a, a point that is pretty, it's a pretty much of a trailing clip point um, and a gorgeous swedge, just beautiful to look at. I love the grind lines on this. This was the knife that really made me fall in love with bevels. I know that sounds goofy, but it really made me pay attention and start looking closer at uh, not only how Ernest Emerson and Emerson knives got some schmutz on there, uh, grinds their bevels, but just how you can see grind lines and how beautiful they are and how they tell a story and how crisp and defined all the surfaces on this blade are. Uh, aftermarket scales from Vantage Blade Works. This is just one of the best and one of my absolute favorite clip point blades and one of my favorites in my collection. CQC 13, catch as catch can, as is with all um, Emerson's, but uh, they'll come around to making them again if they're not right now. All right, second to last. This one's very unique to me. This is the Sandstorm K uh, by Max Ace. To me, this is, well, again, you got the double peaked thing that I like a lot, but I could see how people would call this a drop point with a swedge. You're kind of stretching it with that very, very straight uh, po uh, swedge here. But to me, uh, this, is not a, this is not a harpoon drop point or anything like that nonsense. This is... A clip point. Now, what does the clip mean? That means you've clipped off part of the blade. So imagine this as a drop point. Well, the blade would come out like this and be rounded off and come to the point. Well, that has been clipped off and then swedged. So here it is. I feel like I'm arguing uh, one-sided because no one said no one said that it wasn't a clip point. But I, I sort of had this argument with myself, and uh, I've always kind of had it with this and the combative edge. Um, I'm always, I'm always uh, the, the combative edge. I'm always wondering, is this a clip point or a drop point with a swedge? And, and I've just brought down the hammer. And so this is a clip point and uh, a, a quite impressive one at that at K110 giant four and a quarter blade, very broad and just beautiful to look at. Now they, when they make their knives, they have a K110 version like this. That's inexpensive with inexpensive materials. And then they do a tie version that's more sculpted and a little different. So they did that with this. They just came out with a Sandstorm fancy version too. And man, oh, it's gorgeous. And they did some really cool uh, compound grinding on that blade. So do check it out. Max Ace makes some really cool stuff. I've had a few, um, but this is, uh, and I would like to have more, but this is the one representative I have in the group right now. Okay, so last up, you know what it's going to be, or or at least who's going to make it. Last up is the Cold Steel Espada Large. Uh, I would have gone for the XL at seven and a half inches in blade length, but frankly, I don't really carry that knife. That is more of a, a home defense folder, if you will. Get one in each hand, and I'll do some Cinewally on your ass. Uh, this one here, uh, the XL or the uh, the large, is the most useful, I think, of the lineup. Now, I never really liked the small or the medium sized uh, Espada. I didn't like the way it fit in the hand. It always felt like it was going to fall out of the hand. To me, uh, you do not have that issue, obviously, with this nice big handle. All these different places to hold the handle. Um, <clears throat> This is the newer dressed up version. The old original version, which I have in, in the G10, um, has a longer Spanish style swedge. So that swedge comes all the way back to about here. Uh, this one looks more like an American Bowie to me. Um, and um, I, I, I can't say I have a preference. I kind of liked this when it first came out better than the original, but now in recognizing uh, the the tip of the hat to the sp original Spanish design, the original Espada blade uh, rings just slightly more true. Uh, but in any case, where else are you going to uh, be able to get something like this but cold steel? And what I mean is by in this size. We saw the 
Beyond EDC, asymmetrical Navaja. That's a pretty awesome knife and pretty big, but it's not as big as this. So, so yeah, I, I will wrap this all up with probably the coolest clip points are the Espadas. This is not rank ordered. I like them all, uh, but, you know, that, that Cold Steel Espada takes the cake for me. All right, well, tell me which clip point knives take the cake for you. Drop it down below. Are they impractical to you? Are the tips too high? Do you like the idea of bringing the tip down lower? And can you do that effectively? with a clip point blade where i think we learned that we can so is there a clip point for you are you as crazy about them as i let me know in the comments below join us on sunday for a great interview and then thursday tomorrow night for thursday night knives 10 p.m eastern standard time right here on youtube facebook and twitch and of course if you want to help support the show you can do so by going over to patreon that's the knifejunkie.com slash patreon or scan the qr code right here on the screen for Jim Morgan is magic behind the switcher. I'm Bob DeMarco saying until next time, don't take dull for an answer. Thanks for listening to the knife junkie podcast. If you enjoyed the show, please rate and review at review the for show notes for today's episode, additional resources, and to listen to past episodes, visit our website, the knife You can also watch our latest videos on YouTube at the knife slash YouTube. Check out some great knife photos on the knife slash Instagram and join our Facebook group at the knife slash Facebook. And if you have a question or comment, email them to Bob at the knife or call our 24 seven listener line at 724-466-4487. And you may hear your comment or question answered on an upcoming episode of the Knife Junkie Podcast. Mm -hmm.